All right. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin in prayer. And you guys that are still talking while I'm praying, God sees you. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for this time together, Lord. Thank you for all of those who've gathered here. Lord, I pray that this would be a time of refreshing and enjoyment. Lord, we just invite your presence to be here among us, Lord. And we just want to change and we just want to grow, Lord. We just want to be closer to you. Lord, so just uh, help us to hear, learn tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I've been really excited that um, so many of you guys have been coming out. I mean, this has just been a really great Bible study. Um, sorry about things being a little messy. Um, we were kind of doing some work on the kitchen yesterday, and, um, and so we're making progress. If you smell a little smell, that silicone from us putting new stainless steel on the wall. But And if you don't want any kind of... Uh, mess, then go to a church where they're not doing anything, and it'll be nice and clean, and nobody will make a mess, right? So hey, uh, just a quick little opener. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the quotes in the Bible, uh, or one, not one of the quotes in the Bible, one of the quotes in the book says this, it says, hurry is not of the devil, it is the devil. What do you guys think about that? You said yes, so why Why do you say Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Right, Nancy. I was just gonna say, sometimes when we get in in a hurry, like you said, we miss what God's trying to tell us, and everything is God's time and not ours, and we get we try to get ahead of Him, and we need to back off and be still, yeah. and wait for Him to tell us what to do. So rush, rush, hurry, hurry, right? The American way. Yeah. You, can't, you can't wait upon the Lord in a hurry. No, you can't, Steve. Have, uh, a, pa- a pastor uh, made a, actually made an acronym out of that. Well, he was t- talking about people that, he, why haven't you been in church? You know, my, my son has a, a little league game, you know, or a soccer game. We have people, you know, too busy, you know? Yeah. He said, busy, brought under Satan's yoke. Okay, yeah. That's a good one. James. I like that old popular when haste makes waste. Okay, yeah. If I'm in a hurry, it's like you're driving. You're in a hurry driving, you can get a ticket, maybe you can get a flat tire, record car, anything can happen. Yeah. And most of the time, you end up at the same red light anyway. The same guy you flew past, right? So... All right, so I don't know. I mean, we talked about, um, you know, buying the book and reading the book. um, And I know not everybody's going to read the book. And that's okay because we're going to go over a lot of this stuff here. But I think you will get a lot out of the book. Um, Is there anything, like, for you guys that have the book, that read this chapter on meditation, is there anything that uh, stuck out to you? One thing, Deb, as she finishes chewing our candy that was on the table. Okay. Um, it was uh, Zeke's birthday. I don't know if you got a chance to meet him, but it was his birthday on Tuesday. So you're eating birthday cake from Tuesday. But it tastes better like that because the icing kind of solidifies. I don't know. I like old birthday cake better. Okay. There's just so much. There's so much in there, man. Okay. Like communing with the Creator of the heaven and earth, the eternal lover of the world. Seek intimacy with God and faithfulness to God. It's just so inspiring. Inspires me. Yeah. You know? It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. kind of like the you know just starting with the hurry. It's so counter to. Right, almost everything we're ingrained with. It's like slow down, you know, seek the, the solitude, seek the times with the Lord. Anything else really quick that you guys who read the book, anything that stuck out to you? Yes, Connie? It's like a part of, like, uh, for the first time I understood more like um, in, this was back in Exodus, when the people were saying to Moses for him to talk to God before them. Yeah. 
and it says, um, or he says in there about, um, uh, about that it was risky business to come into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. um, they realized that being in his presence, uh, learned a little about God, and they realized that being in his presence was risky business. And then he went on to say, and, uh, so that Moses talked to him for them, in this way, they could maintain religious respectability without attending uh, this. That so, stuck out to me. Yeah. So it's how do you put it? Religious responsibility to have respectability. a respectability. That there's no real connection with um, between us and our thoughts. Yeah. So that's kind of religion defined, right? I can go and kind of, but I don't like God too close. It's like I can come here. And I can, keep that apart. So I get religious respectability, which people used to care about. The bad news is they don't even care about that anymore. <laughs> so, but before it used to be they would care about it. Like a lady told me, she's like, well, any self-respecting person goes to church. And so for her, like church was a social to show that they were self-respecting people. It wasn't so much about your relationship with Christ, your intimacy. I don't know True. Yeah. Yeah. Or we have places in our life where we don't like. Okay. Like we don't want you going in that part of my life. Like God, I'll let you in like to here, but like this is mine. Like this is mine. So, um, what do you guys think of just? You know, what do you guys think of when you just? Think of the word meditation. If somebody just said to you meditation, what just what comes to mind? No right or wrong answer. Just uh, to read something, reading what you're saying, thinking about what it is that you're Okay. Uh, Mike? I imagine, you know, when reading a passage or anything like that, or even imagining being in heaven, you know, you meditate on it. Mm -hmm. You go there in your imagination. Yeah, good. I like the term pondering. Okay. Pondering on it. Okay. Just yeah. think about it. Okay, yeah, that's good. Zach? Meditate to me was always like clearing your mind, like emptying out all the junk and just like yeah. clearing it. And, and that's kind of where I was at, like the thought of meditation. Because honestly, like... I was like pushed away from meditation. Like that was something new agey. That was for Hindus that didn't have anything to do with what we do here. So we're definitely going to talk about that. Um, so meditation is mentioned 58 times in the Bible. So this is definitely a Christian concept, right? It's probably different than, um, you know, it's obviously different than, and we're going to talk about that than like, what an Eastern religion or a New Age type um, view of meditation would be. Um, if we could get a Bible reader, this wasn't in our reading, but Joshua 1 8 is my most favorite scripture when it deals with this word meditation. So if somebody has their Bible, I need a new King James though, because you're going to mess me up if you read another one. Because I need certain key words to stick out. New. I can get it on my phone. All right, if you can read it nice and loud so everybody can hear. Just verse 8? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Say good success? Yeah. Okay. Good success. So, Joshua was given a formula, right? That if we meditate, in his case, it was the law, which in his case would have been the Torah, right? The first five books of the Bible that were written by Moses, who was his mentor. That if he would meditate on that, 
and observe it or be obedient to it, right? Actually listen to what it says. Then this is your result. This is your result. Anybody want to prosper and have good success? That sounds good to me, right? So that's the promise that was given to Joshua that if he would meditate on these words, on his words that were given, and then actually do them, so observe them, then he would, he would prosper and have good, not just success, but good success. So, um, the, this book um, defines meditation simply as this. The ability to hear God's voice and obey His Word. The ability to hear God's voice and obey His Word. So to be able to hear from God and obey, that's essentially, according to this book, meditation. And, and we un do understand that, you know, this, this is a good book, this is a tool, right? This isn't the Bible. You know what I mean? There's always going to be opinions and stuff in there. But... Um, the ability to hear God's voice and obey His Word. So that's our definition of meditation. And uh, before we get into the meat of this, if it's okay with you guys, we're going to do a little praise and worship. If it's not okay with you guys, we're going to do praise and worship anyway. So just make it good with you. So, <laughs> and, um, or maybe... John is where? Okay. Okay. So we might be taking. Maybe you guys might get your way. Are we? Are we able to do praise and worship, or are we gonna? Yeah. yeah. We could, but you don't want to hear my voice. Be like, better. We could. <laughs> All right, let's just calm our minds right now and just kind of, you know, just even if you want to close your eyes for a second and just take some deep breaths, relax.
Thank you for creating us and giving us life. Thank you for giving us vocal cords that we can praise you in song. We love you. else hear from the Lord while we were sometimes God will just drop things in your spirit sometimes it's for you sometimes it's for everybody else but you know there's there's freedom here so if you feel like God dropped something in your spirit just step out and share with us so all your work Okay. So it was that they were stepping and then it was being added. Then they were, so they took the step. God put the place in there. That's good. That can be a word for somebody for sure. I you know, if I start if I waited to start stuff until I had all the resources, all the people. I would have never did anything. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys haven't noticed, we start doing stuff and we believe that God is going to provide for it, right? Right. right. So, Nothing wrong with that. so uh, you know, Mike had a word that people get to know God and the first thing I was going to start off was just simple statement. Well, I guess a question, do you know that God wants to be in fellowship with you? That God wants your fellowship? Oh, well, who am I? I mean, God wants your fellowship. He created you. He wants to be in fellowship with you. Uh, we see Adam and Eve, right, in Genesis, that he came and walked with them in the cool of the day. And then uh, Connie talked a little bit in the beginning about, you know, Moses. Do we read that passage, Exodus 33, 11? Second book in the Bible, Exodus. 33, 11. Okay, go ahead, you can read it. I just needed those specific parts for the for Joshua 1, 8. Or it was gonna mess me up. Go ahead. 33, 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. And Moses would return to the camp, and his young Annie Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. No, that's good. That's good. I, I think the main point was that we see, okay, I, I'm just trying to establish a pattern where Adam and Eve in the garden, God would come walk them. It was a cool today, right? Then Moses, it says, face to face like a friend. Right. I mean, how about that? You ever, you know, if we, we've ever sung that song in church, I am a friend of God. That's where, that's kind of the base, the base of it. Um, and then uh, one of the things is you see the life of Jesus with the Father, you know, where he would say, you know, I do what I hear, what I do what I see the Father doing. I say what I hear the Father saying. So like last week when we talked about that John 15 about abiding, and he said, you know, if you abide in me, they had an example of how Jesus was abiding in the Father. 
they had that example. So every time where Jesus would talk about, you know, I, I don't do the works, it's the Father in me, it was that same thing where once he ascended to be with the Father, then we had a pattern of his life to show how we're supposed to be in relationship to Jesus. That makes sense? Acts 1.1. 1, 1. Acts 1.1, 1, 1, would somebody like to read that? Who's going to read for us? Mike. Prologue, the former account I made. Oh. Just make something up. <laughs> Theophilus. 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 Calm, Theophilus. All that Jesus began both to do and to teach. <laughs> Keep going, I'm sorry. Verse 2, read that as well. Until the day in which he was taken up after he threw the Holy Spirit, oh, he threw the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Okay, so it kicks off that he's writing an account of all Jesus. Um, he began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, and then... Through the Holy Spirit, he's given commandments to the apostles which he had chosen. So when Jesus ascended, it's not like he was done, right? He wasn't done. He was still active in the church through the Holy Spirit. But we can see, you know, in, in various accounts, you know, whether it was, you know, even at the martyrdom of Stephen, right? Stephen looked up and he saw, you know, Jesus standing at the, you know, at the right hand of God. He had a vision of an open heaven. Paul, you know... Paul got kicked off his high horse and saw Jesus, right? So Jesus is still active, still wants your fellowship, right? And that's kind of that's kind of what we're doing. So our purpose for meditation is a familiar friendship with Jesus. That's one of the quotes from a book. So just as you know, just as Moses was a friend of God, we can be a friend of God, right? We have a better covenant with better promises. So everything that you see in the old covenant, the relationship that you see like David was a man after God's own heart, right? Moses, Joshua, all those things. We have a better covenant with better promises. So if Moses could be a friend with God, then we want that friendship with Jesus. Also, uh, it talked about that the purpose of meditation was to create an emotional and spiritual space which allows Christ to create an inner sanctuary in our heart. I'll, I'll read that one more time. To create an emotional and spiritual space which allows Jesus to create an inner sanctuary in our heart. We're making room. We're making space. Is that something you wrote down? For I did. Okay, yeah, that was good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of part of it. Um, okay, so back to the Bible, Revelations 3.20. If somebody could read that for me. there just raise your hand so we can know that you're going to be our reader bob is our reader nice and loud buddy okay behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come into him and dine with him and him with me okay good and you know and i think that you know i i think i've even used that and like i've been at a lot of different church services where it's like you know it's time for the altar call and it's like you know he's knocking at your heart right but really that, I mean, he's writing that to the church. Yeah, he's re Revelation 3.20. He's writing that to the church. Like, they basically, like, he's like, you know, like, I'm knocking. Like, are you going to let me in? You know? And that's kind of what we talked about with, you know, the whole thing with Moses where the people said, all right, you go talk to God. That way we don't have to, you know? And it's like, are we going to let, are we going to let Christ in 
for those places in our heart, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know, he who opens the door to me, and what it says, then I promise to come in and sup. 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 So in other words, fellowship, right? Uh, You know, he's going to come in and fellowship with you if you open your heart to him. So you have to open up your heart. So again, that's kind of what we're doing with meditation. That's kind of the point of what we're going to do with this is create that space um, in our heart. We're going to essentially open up the door. So if he's knocking, we're going to open up the door. We're going to let him in. We're going to let him in our heart and create these spaces where we can connect with him. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So let's contrast this with Eastern religions and New Age. I know like, um, you know, like all the rage that you see like with celebrities who always talk about like transcendental meditation and stuff like that. What is it? Scientology. Do they do meditation too? I'm sure they do, but they're really all. That's the only paper religion that that promotes um, Self-centeredness. Yeah. yeah, well, they're definitely... Well, no, I'm sorry. But all the... Well, you bring up a good point because um, a lot of the meditation that's taught, whether it's New Age or like a lot of Eastern religions, like it is self-centered based. It really is. You know, it's about, you know, yourself, about emptying yourself out, detaching from the world. Um, you know, focusing on yourself. They'll say, oh, well, I, I meditated and you get your heart rate down and everything, right? And, and, and so, the, like, why they want to empty themselves out, right? Christian meditation is about filling ourselves up, right? We, wanna, we, we don't just want to empty ourselves out. You know why? Go ahead and go into... Okay, yeah, let's read Luke 11... 24 through 26. And whoever gets there, just stick a hand up and... Luke 11, 24 through 26. All right, go for it. Nice and loud. Okay. When an evil spirit comes out of a man... It goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. Okay. So we don't want to just em- just empty yourself out, right? Because then you empty yourself out, and you just make room for more demons, right? <laughs> so we want to fill ourselves up with the things of God. That's what that's what this is. So it's not that's a big thing. Eastern meditation, right? Chris, you've had something. I've heard your testimony, kind of the New Age stuff. I was going to share something. Yeah, go ahead. Talk a little bit about the the New Age view of meditation. So I. I was in the New Age for 10 years, taught yoga, meditated every day, you know, to the point where, I mean, and this does happen, it's from the enemy, but like even levitated a tiny bit, like off the floor, like that stuff is real and it happens, it's obviously not from God. Um, and, and the word meditation for me, like now it's challenging. I, I do practice Christian, Christian meditation, but just using the word is hard for me because I was so like steeped in the new age for so long and that meditation is so different. And as I was um, spending time in solitude this week, like you asked us to do, God um, said, open the scriptures and he took me to Thessalonians 1.9 and to this part of that scripture and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Yeah. And so it was just so amazing because like God knew that I was struggling a little bit with the word meditation. It was just I you know reassuring me like you've turned from idols to ser- serving the true God. Mm-hmm. And um, you're right in the new age movement they teach you to 
clear your mind. So any thought that comes in, you just clear it, clear it, clear it until you're just completely empty. And definitely, you know, demons come in. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, when you're doing it, you think like, oh my gosh, I'm just achieving enlightenment. Like that's the goal, is to become like God, you know, in the New Age movement. So each level, you know, it's like you, your body almost just goes. You don't even feel your body anymore when you get to that that point. You just keep going and going and going. And so that's seen in the New Age as a really great thing, like, wow, something to be celebrated. But we know that that's not what God wants, and that's what the enemy tried to do, become like God. And Yeah, so like that's God. what I was going to say. Yeah. There's always a counterfeit. Yeah. The enemy always has a counterfeit. There's a real and then there's a counterfeit. And so because of the counterfeit, you get steered totally. Like I got steered to like meditation is bad. Don't you know what I mean? But it, it was just because the word means different things. You know, and it means different things as a Christian. So what we need to do is we need to understand the, the Christian meditation. Like you talk about the New Age, Eastern, like it's to detach from the world, our meditation is to attach to God, right? So it's attachment, you know, fully to God. Um, you know, I know that even like, and you know, they push this stuff, like, I can remember, what was the Tina Turner movie? What's Love Got to Do With It? Everybody who watched that, it was a really good movie, but everybody who watched it after that, because Tina Turner got into, you know, she got into Buddhism, but she would like do that little chant, yeah. and she would, you know, just keep saying it again and again and again, and I think that like opened different people up. Like, oh my gosh, Tina Turner did it. Like, maybe I can do it too, you know. And it just opens the door to this kind of, um, you know, false kind of meditation. So I just want to make that distinction so we understand that like not all meditation is the same. Does that make sense to you guys? So sometimes one, one more thing. Sure. I just want it because there's so many people here. There's something that's um, popular, and you might hear it. They're using it a lot in hospitals and schools, and it's called mindfulness. And it's just another counterfeit version, like of the Holy Spirit teaching meditation. Um, so it's like meditative ways of eating, meditative ways of you know when you wake up in the morning. It's called mindfulness, and a lot of doctors are talking about it, and schools are recommending it, you know, so I just, it's really infiltrating. It's like, watch TV, and you'll see it. You'll see the new age over and over and over and over again, you know? Yes. I was just going to say, when you talk about real counterfeit, when they have a counterfeit dollar bill, they always say, don't look at the counterfeit, look at the real one, and then you'll know what the counterfeit is. Yeah. So that's why it's so important that if you read the Word and know the Word of God, then it'll keep you focused and you'll get steered away to the counterfeit. Yeah, you'll kind of recognize this stuff. You know, you'll see it and be like, mm, nah, not right. Yeah. And don't you think it's funny that any kind of mumbo jumbo is 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 okay. They can take anything from any religion and they'll bring it mainstream in a second. Unless it's Christian, we can't talk about anything in Christianity, right? So we can bring anything from any religion except Christianity because we don't want to we don't want to talk about that. We can't involve that, right? They never talk about a separation of church and state unless it has to deal with Christianity. You know, they don't tell Muslims, well, you can't bring in your prayer rug and pray five times a day. They'll say, no, we have to have space for that. Yeah. You know, but, you know, you know, God forbid a kid would come in with a Bible and want to pray and ask people, you know, yeah. talk to people about Jesus. Anyway, don't want to get sidetracked. Don't want a rabbit trail. So a lot of people might say like, okay, this is just kind of impractical or like, a little bit of a waste of time, right? So, you know, like you've heard people say like, oh, well, they're so spiritually minded, they're no earthly good. Right. I knew somebody used to say that all the time, you know? And so, you know, I wonder if we look at like meditation like this, I mean, it's, um, there's another quote in here from William Penn, by the way, who was a Quaker, Pennsylvania is named after him. 
True godliness does not turn men out of the world, but enables them to live better in it and excites endeavors to mend it. I'll read it again. True godliness does not turn men out of the world, but enables them to live better in it, and it excites endeavors to mend it. So, in other words, what he's saying is that, you know, getting close with the Lord and godliness, it's not something that should totally take you out of the world, but allow you to live in the world and flourish in the world better and also you know, be on that lookout of how to fix the broken world, right, through Christ. That's more of that overflow kind of principle that we keep talking about. And it says that, you know, from meditation, a lot of the stuff that you're going to get as you focus on the Lord, it's going to be really practical and even mundane, you know. Uh, you know, how to, you know, how to talk to your spouse, how to talk to your child, how to talk to your boss, how to solve, right, that wisdom can come from God to give us very practical <laughs> solutions to everyday questions, right? So we get, right, if, if we start that, you know, God is a source of all wisdom, the more we seek Him, the more that that wisdom is going to flow, the more that the everyday things that we do are going to be more profitable because we are kind of in touch with the Lord. How about this one? This is kind of the one that kind of got me to where they talked about sanctifying our imagination. Mm -hmm. Sanctifying the imagination. What did you guys think about that? If I say that God wants to sanctify your imagination, what would you say? Yes. I thought that was pretty crazy. I thought it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like when you become an adult and like you're supposed to shut all that off, you know? Yes. Well, I, I'll kind of, I'll give you an idea when Johnny was singing the song about, you know, being there with the Lord, you know, and kind of that picture to be able to kind of in your mind's eyes ascend to be in the throne room of heaven. You know, uh, one of the things that I tried to meditate on and but you know that scripture that talks about we're seated seated in heavenly places with Christ. You know, like picturing myself like, you know, like I, I pictured myself like in a little chair, right? Sitting next to like a big throne. Like I had a little chair and I was like seated there. Like, you know what I mean? It, it was like just, you know, using your imagination, like some of these concepts to kind of just, you know, think and internalize them, you know, and. And I know that, you know, it's like, you know, it says, like, I has not seen or you heard, but God revealed it to us by His Spirit, you know? Yeah, Go I, ahead. I just want to, just, it goes along with what you're saying. One of the first visions I had when I was up in Grace Life, and the Lord was pulling me back here. You know, I had just talked to you and stuff like that, and I was at a, um, I was at my apartment in Bay. And I just said, because I was wanted to do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, I, his name is Pastor Matt Cooper. He was the worship leader. And I said, Jesus, I just, you know, I promised him that I would come. You know, I never went up there, but I, I promised him that I would be there. And just like that, I went into to a crowd of witnesses. I looked around, I had my guitar on, I looked straight ahead, and thousands, millions of white robes on. And I looked to my left, and there was Matt with his guitar. So, do you know, know where I'm going? It's like, don't worry about it. Yeah. You're going to be with him in heaven. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it was great. It was yeah. great. And that's when. Yeah. I mean, what about what about if what about if you meet somebody on the street and 
you know, they're a hot mess, right? And you talk to them about the Lord, and you can get a vision of them as who God wants them to be, right? Healthy, full of the Spirit, worshiping God, clean, right? You know, is that not your imagination? Well, when I read the Bible, you know, because I'm into, like, like drunk, I see the Bible come to life. When I read it, yeah. that's my visual. Okay. Like, I see it come to life, and that's why I do dramatic presentations, or I do this or that or whatever. But the Word is living and active. So when you read it, if you, you know, if they're talking about Jesus walking down the street, and... You know, there's the leper waiting for him. You, you need to see that. You know, you yeah. need to start seeing that's part, what he's That doing. is part of meditating that we're right. going to talk about. Right. Yeah, for and sure. That's it. That, you know, that's how I read it. I mm-hmm. mean, I see him doing it. You know, I see the woman with the issue of blood reaching out and grabbing the tzitzit. You know, yeah. I mean, I can see that happening, and I think that's what you, know, you should do just kind of, like you're reading it and you're seeing it. And you're you know, immersing yourself in it. Right yeah. in front of your eyes, you know. Absolutely, and that's using your imagination. I think sometimes, like, if we think about, well, you know, my mind goes places I don't want it to go, and that's my imagination, right? Well, I mean, we're redeeming that, you know? It's just like probably everything that comes out of your mouth probably shouldn't come out of your mouth, right? But you don't just not use it, right? You know, we redeem it. Yes. Well, I see it said in the book that the common experience of those who walk with God is one of being given images of what can be. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, giving images of what can be. Yeah, absolutely. And you gave us all imagination. We're created with imagination. Right. And when Kim shared what she did, wasn't that sure. seeing like how he causes us to... Uh, see in our mind's eye or imagination of who he really is and his heart towards us, which what she shared. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so sanctifying the imagination, like they think about sanctified, which is set apart and dedicated to God. Um, in, in meditation, we are setting our imagination where it, it's his. So he can then give us visions, he can then speak to us. Um, it needs to be set apart because if we're not meditating and sanctifying our imagination, the enemy, that's the battlefield. The enemy can come in and he can start playing and he does it always, he does it for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, like, and even how the Bible says that, you know, without a vision the people perish. Mm-hmm. You know, they throw off restraint. Where does the vision come from, right? And so... You know, there, there's so much, there's so much more that you know, just that, you know, to be able to ascend from sort of just what we see physically around us, you know, and we're kind of told to just shut all that down, shut it all off. But if God gave it to us, then He probably wants to use it, right? Mm-hmm. He probably wants to use it. So, um, the the book specifically says God created us with an imagination, and can redeem it and use it. For the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. First thing I thought of when you said that was Romans 12, too, about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if our mind can be renewed, why can our imagination not be renewed? But it's going from like a spirit, from the worldly perspective, yeah. we're going to have a lot of imagination by what's been programmed into us. Mm-hmm. Those patterns are going to bring around about worldly imaginations. Yeah. You know, like fame, fortune, and having all these things. But then when we're when, when our minds are renewed by the Spirit of God, mm-hmm. now we do start gaining visions on where we're going, what we're doing. You know, That's it's it. different. David said, I've hidden your word in my heart. You know, and knowing that word to that great which brings up like you talked about this the, the sacred place. It's the secret place, true. 
Yeah. That's where we commune with God in, in our heart of hearts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gets really intense. I know in the Word of God, there's nothing that's going to take the place of that in this world. But knowing Jesus and His words. It says in John 15, if I remain in you and my words remain in you, and that'll be part of yeah. what we're gonna do when we meditate. You're kind of Amen. kind of chewing on the word. So how do we meditate? Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Right? First of all, it was when. So we all have to meditate at six thirty, between six thirty and six fifty every morning. Right? Of course that doesn't work, right? That doesn't work for all of us have different schedules. So, you know, if your schedule, if you're a very person who likes to do things very orderly, yeah, of course you can set a time. But remember, with all the different things that we're going to talk about, we don't want to turn these into law. We don't want to turn these into just works where we just kind of run through them to get them done. Okay, my meditation, 7 to 7, 10, and you're just sitting there. All right, I'm done. I meditated for today. Yeah, I'm awesome, you know? Right? That's not... That's not what this is all about. And they had this concept of holy leisure in there, which is kind of interesting. Um, and he just talked about, you know, living your life in a way that's not super hurried or super rushed. And the only thing I can tell you guys is just to kind of simplify it. You know, some people are like, too, their lives are too slow. Like, they don't do nothing, you know. But, but I'm saying, like, most of us are, are you know, we kind of get caught up in the culture of busyness and to slow down and to just kind of have a normal pattern throughout your day. I know sometimes, like, there, there was a thing of, like, you know, communing with God where they would call it, like, the daily office where you did it in the morning, you did it at lunch, you did it in the evening. You know, so it's, you know, can you find these breaks and these spaces in your day where you can kind of pattern to say, okay, I'm going to take some time to just meditate on the Lord. So, um, you know, you'll have to figure some of this out and where, um, anywhere where you could be quiet. You know, so if you have a noisy house where people are yelling a lot, you know, you might need to go outside, go somewhere else, right? Or... You know, if you can find a quiet place, that's where you want to be. You can leave your phone in the other room. You don't have to bring it with you. You know? Yes, Mike. I'm sorry, guys. I'm about to use it. He just said a lot of you, including me, how long you want to be on milk. Yeah. Start to eat meat. Okay. All right. Want to be me? I'm a big meat eater, so. and I don't drink any milk at all. Okay, um, so a quiet place. Probably take your phone out of your pocket, even if it's on vibrate, it's going to distract you. Try to take a break from your phone. I mean, honestly, you'll be fine. You know, like you can catch up as soon as you get done. Um, and. Maybe you have, a, if there's somewhere that's close by you that's really pretty, you know. I know, like, um, that, I don't know if they still have it, but, like, Mount Galitzin, how it had that little place where you could walk in the back. It's just gorgeous, yeah. you know. That'd be a I great place to yeah. meditate. So you have that close to you yeah. um, where you have a little kind of garden and almost station. somewhere. They have the stations at the cross there. Yeah, so, I mean, if you... If you're lucky enough to have something like that right in your backyard, that but, but if you have a really nice place, what? I say go to your closet and expand your imagination. You could. <laughs> but I think the I think the big thing is I mean, depends on what you got in your closet. You have to have a nice clean closet. Um, but if you if you have a but basically I think that you should kinda have a place where you go because you don't want to like be hunting. You don't want to spend like 45 minutes like, all right, well, I got to find a place to meditate, right? Then you're never going to do it. So try to find a place. You can do it in your car if you're at peace there. Where are you peaceful? Don't even say she has skeletons in her closet. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We all got skeletons in our closet, but some people, their skeletons still got meat on them. So, yes.
There's something to that specifically, and I don't, you know, I, I haven't put my finger on it, but there's something to the very early morning prayer, and it would say Jesus a lot. He woke up earlier than everybody else to pray. So I don't know, there's something between that three and six window. Yeah. And there is that, that room, that, that other space that you go to, become one. <laughs> well, you know, like with me, I can say that. With me. I can't necessarily say that this is um, in the Bible, but Perry Stone, you, he was a big. He would say that you should have a place where you pray on a regular basis, and his belief was that if a, a constant place where you pray from almost punctures a hole. You know, and kind of makes a hole in the dimension, and it just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that you can make an argument for that biblically, but that's what he, I remember reading that, it stuck with me. Yeah. It put me to a whole other place, but then, too, at my workplace, if I wonder why I'm quiet, I meditate and talk to God as I'm working. Mm hmm. And I don't eat anything until four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So I fast every day then. You know, and I talk about I eat every day. And I go I go to that place where the spirit hits me sometimes at my workstation that I just I get so overwhelmed I'm going to the bathroom. And when I called you, I had to walk outside. I said, Yeah. It's so strong. Yeah. And then it really truly I love it actually. Yeah, well, you're getting some of God's presence. We're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there's time, you know, and I was talking to my wife last night, and all of a sudden, the spirit came over sitting on the bed. I had to go in another room. <laughs> yeah. This, this getting, you, 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 you get in that, it's that place, that private space, you know, just you and God. I mean, it's a secret place, right? Yeah, That's what you're talking Yeah. Be, it's just become one with Him, mm -hmm. and it's blocked. Like I said, the phone, I'm like, you know, I just, just get in that place, I guarantee he'll meet you. Yeah. Um, see, uh, and I think that's wonderful, you know what I mean, to have your secret place. I think we, need to, we all need to get to a point where our secret place could be anywhere. You know, because for yeah. me, it can be in the car. If I'm, Ideally, if that car, would be I'm, great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's, start off there, but know that, you know, hey, I'm sitting at the table and all of a sudden I just feel like I need to start praying in tongues or whatever I'm going to do. I'm just going to get in the zone with God anywhere. You know what I'm saying? And don't limit yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Don't no, and, and then I think as you go on, I think, you know, as you go on in time yeah. and it becomes more of a habit, you'll be able to do that. I think in the beginning, yeah, though, I think it's place. good to have a place. Yeah. Just in the beginning and then after a while, yeah, anywhere could become your place. And breaking into a daily rhythm in life like maybe you're just driving and you know hey i'm gonna pull off on the side of the road i'm gonna go kind of by the side of the river and just you know so you know looking for those times too that are just randomly throughout the day that you know what hey i could just you know let me just go and get you know 10 20 minutes alone with god you know i think that'd be a good thing and then it talks about your posture like how should you be? Should you be kneeling? Should you be? And it says it says it really doesn't give you anything because you can look at a lot of different postures that people were in the Bible. Everything from prostrate to standing. Yeah, because it's comfortable. That's the that's the uh, what it suggests is that you want to be comfortable. So it talks about just being seated if that's the most comfortable thing for you. And with your palms up, just because yeah. that's a mode of receiving. <coughs> so, you know, if you don't know and you don't, I mean, again, you're going to have to understand that, like, we're going to try to give you some real practical things, but none of this is an ABC123 formula. We're going to give you some things to try, and you're going to have to try to figure out what's best for you. So how are you most comfortable? How are you most relaxed? You know, but you could start 
with just sitting down with your palms up. It would be an easy place to start if you don't have a preference. Um, some people prefer to lay down, you know, as long as you literally don't fall asleep, you know. And then, you know, that's not the goal of it, but, you know, you can lay down and relax. You can go on your knees. You can lay on your stomach. I mean, whatever you feel comfortable, but, you know, just... Um, and just ex just experiment different ways, you know. This is kind of you finding your way here, you know, finding your best way to um, to connect. And so we're going to run through a couple practical examples today. We're going to do this together, and because it gives us a couple a uh, couple ways. The first one is um, just kind of meditating on scripture. And so there's a couple different ways that he talked about doing this. And the first one was just sort of to take one small scripture and just kind of really just process it and think about it. Um, and we're going to try something similar to like kind of what Nancy talked about, where we, since we talked about sanctifying the imagination, um, I, I have a scripture verse on book. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, 35 through 39. So we're actually going to attempt to do this. And I'm going to try to just talk you through this. And obviously, you know, this is going to be between you and God. So when we actually do it, so um, just try to get relaxed, right? Mark chapter 4. And we're going to begin at verse 35. And I'm going to read down to 41. Okay, we all ready? I'm going to read it out loud. Now, just in advance, you know, again, like we're going to read this but kind of go through the extra step of placing yourself in the scene. So you're in the boat, okay? On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But when he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are per perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and sea obey him? So just where you're sitting, just relax and go ahead and just get the palms up, close your eyes. Just take a couple deep breaths. So I just want, to, want you to just picture yourself in the story. You're on the boat with Jesus. You can kind of feel the boat rocking, kind of left and right. Smell the, the water, right? The sea water. You kind of smell that. You're rocking on the boat. Now feel that great windstorm just kind of all of a sudden. You feel the wind. You feel the wind coming. Maybe feeling the rain beating down on your face. You look up, you see the dark clouds. And then just you see the chaos. You kind of see the chaos of life around you in your day-to-day -day life. What, what, are, what is the chaotic situations that are around you? You see that as part of the storm. So that's part of the storm. The chaos is around you. You're in the boat. You kind of see the chaos and it's it's loud and it's noisy. And then all of a sudden you see Jesus. Jesus is laying there sleeping. See the other disciples going and waking him up. And see him stand up. 
and just proclaim peace be still. See the sunshine come out. Feel the warmth on your skin. See all the chaos that you had in life just settling down. People settling down. They're walking away. Everything's getting very peaceful. Picture from Jesus, there's a river of, of peace flowing out of him. Maybe even see the word peace in your mind. Just let that calming effect just come and fill you up. Just that river of life just gently flowing into you, coming from your feet all the way into your whole body. And then you see Jesus in all his glory right there and you're just in awe at his feet. You just feel this presence of peace come upon you. All right, you guys can go ahead and just open your eyes and kind of come out of that. How did that feel? Okay. <laughs> so that's kind of using your imagination. Maybe for some of you guys that was a little weird or whatever, but, you know, it, at first, you know, you're just sort of, you know, that's, that's one aspect of meditation, just what we went through. So when you read the story, I mean, I'm obviously not going to be there to narrate it, but you, you, you're going to get that, you know, you're going to take those little bits of pieces and put yourself there and just experience what's happening in that story. You know, just experience what's going on with Jesus. And, um, you know, that's one way to do it, right? How many of you guys like that? I think most of you. How many of you thought it was kind of weird? Right. Nobody wants to admit it. That's okay. You thought. I always well, right. I can try to meditate on where you know when Peter walked on water, you know, to get out of the boat. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I have to share this. Okay. Um, also, while we were in worship earlier, like I can see a storm, and I felt that God wants us to know that the same Spirit lives in us, and we can speak to that storm in our minds. I know I'm not the only one who's battling the storms in my mind right now, in my mind right now. And we have that spirit and we can speak and tell it to stop, just as Christ did. And that was just, I'm just kind of like going away right now. So I couldn't even do it because I was just sitting here with the stuff. <laughs> That's all right. And that's, you know, and listen, this stuff is all going to kind of spin together. So as we kind of get more comfortable, kind of opening ourselves up to the presence of God, the spiritual gifts are just going to flow. Go ahead. I got, I, I got a word. Okay, go for it. That was, that was really awesome. And I hope you all got it. But um, I don't mean to get sidetracked here, but just for 30 seconds, Israel right now is under attack. Mm -hmm. And they have had 1,600 missiles hit them. And what God showed me in that vision here right now is we need to pray for the salvation of, the, of Israel because Jesus wants to calm that storm. But he needs, he needs to do it. And they don't know the Messiah. And so we need to pray that they come to know the Messiah, because he wants to calm that storm right now that's going on, okay? I mean, and I know they're probably all praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but it's Jesus in the midst of the storm that said, peace be still. And so, well, let's pray. Please, let's pray right now. Dear Lord, we just pray right now. We pray for the peace of Israel. Well, we pray for those uh, who don't know you there, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would send laborers to the harvest. We pray, Lord, that you would use uh, this situation to bring uh, more Jews to you in Israel, Lord. We pray that you would open their eyes, that you are the true Messiah, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, we pray for their protection and their peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so we're going to try... Another exercise, and this one is called recollection. So again, these are all forms of meditation, and you're going to have to kind of figure out 
what works for you and what doesn't. So, okay, so once again, we're going to just, why don't you just go ahead and close your eyes and have your palms up. Lord Jesus, we just, we come to you. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our palms down now. So go ahead and flip your hands over. Lord, I just release my fears. I release my stress. I release my failures to you. I release my shortcomings. Those times where I came up short. I release my frustrations to you. I release my unfulfilled dreams to you. Go ahead and put your palms up. And Lord, I just receive new strength for my journey. I receive peace. I receive wisdom from the throne of God. I receive the love of the Father in my heart. I receive new revelations for my life. I receive new visions for my life of things that you would like me to do and things that you would like me to have. I receive new visions for my church and for my family. In Jesus' name. All right, so that's kind of the palms up, palms down. And you could go for a long time with that. So the idea behind that is the palms down is I'm putting that, I'm putting those down, right? I'm, I, you could say I'm releasing my burdens, specific sins that you're struggling with. I'm releasing this. And then your palms up is back when you receive. And we're doing very abbreviated versions of this. But that's kind of the recollection. Palms up, palms down. You guys like that? Yeah? So then, um, then the other, uh, the third, um, the third way we're going to do this is... We can't do this right now um, with the, together, but it's going to be just reflecting, meditating on creation. How many of you guys go for a nature walk, go out in the woods, go by waterfalls, and you feel that you're more connected with God? At that moment? Okay, so now... The ocean? Yeah, yeah, I, the ocean is... You know what, so, okay, so let's, let, let's think about the ocean, right? So, if I'm medi meditating on creation, you know, it's not just, okay, like, you know, I'm going to get a suntan, right? Um, so, if I see the ocean, um, well, let's, let's read this scripture real quick. Romans chapter 1, um, 18 through 20. I just want to just want to read the scripture so this is not like something flaky. Romans 1 18 through 20. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you want to read, raise your hand. Chris, nice and loud, 18 through 20. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay, so, so God reveals his invisible attributes through creation, right? Through the things that are clearly made. So we go back to somebody said, you know, at the ocean, right? So I know when I'm at the ocean, it, it just it looks huge, right? It doesn't, you can't see the end of it. You just, you know, and that shows me sort of the, I guess like, stupid word that I'm about to say, but the bigness of God, <laughs> like how big he is, right? You know, just how vast and, 
if it's a warm day, like you feel the warmth and it, you know, and when I feel like the warmth of sunshine, you feel like kind of God is caring for you, you know, at that moment. Um, you know, I know that um, even like, you know, you see the, you know, you see a variety of different animals, right? Different birds. It's sort of like, you know, how creative, it's a creative God, you know, and even as you look out at everything, sensing God's love because he gave you like the eyesight and the ability to enjoy a scenery, right? A sunset, a sunrise, a sunset, you know, that he gave you skin that you can feel, feel the warmth, you know, enjoy it, right? He gave you that sense so that you could enjoy his creation. So that should reflect back on a God who loves you, right? So whether that's mountains or waterfalls, so what you're doing is you're going out into nature and you are expressly looking at into nature for the expressions of God so that you might know God more through his creation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and also too, when you're at the ocean, not if you walk on the beach, or if you sit and watch the water come in, and you hear it, there's nothing more peaceful than hearing the water come up on the shore. And it's like all kinds of stuff <laughs> be going on behind you. You know, you turn around and there's a storm brewing. But the water's coming in, it's peaceful. Yeah. And you feel God's peace. Go ahead. I all need a vacation. I get a little bit more intellectual. I find it fascinating and profound when I think about how God created all of the trees that breathe in the carbon monoxide that we is the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide that we breathe out, and they put out oxygen that we breathe in, and I'm just so what does that show you about God? Oh, brother, I'll tell you what. And, and it, the way it is ongoing because it's, it's going to last forever. You know, tells me how much he loves me. Okay, good. I mean, that, that is... Mm. Yes, Connie? I would say, like, about the ocean for me, one of the biggest things that happens for me is the ocean is that I like his power and his sovereignty, like... And thinking about remembering scriptures, it says, like, he said... Uh, like the, the waters won't go beyond what he yeah. told yeah. them, yeah. and how they obey him. And it just makes me feel safe. Yeah, that's good, I Johnny. I think, like, when you think about how big the universe is, and how there's like planets and galaxies that are so like, far away. And that I'll probably never see in my human lifetime. You know, I mean, I don't know. People ask, why did God create all that? And it's just like, it's because, like, I feel like when she had, like, Ellie, when she looks at something, like a sunset for the first time, she has this sense of awe and wonder. Mm -hmm. And I feel like God wants us and gives us opportunities every day to discover things about Him that He created to have <coughs> that awe and wonder. You know, mm -hmm. so then when we're like, yeah, we get to explore all of Earth and this and that, and then, like, there's the moon. All right, let's go explore that. I mean, God made that. Yeah. God made Mars. God made all of that, you know. And so there's just countless opportunities just to be in awe and wonder and to think about how he can not just hold the whole world in his hands, he can hold the whole universe in his hands. Amen. Which makes God seem like, yeah, he's huge and amazing, and yet he cares so much about me all of us individuals it's just awesome um, yeah yeah well by the way i do believe that in eternity we are going to colonize the universe yes. but i can't prove that scripture <laughs> I, I mean I, that's my answer to why did he create all that and then there's just life here yeah. i believe that in eternity we're going to be colonizing those planets and spreading the glory of God to them just like man was supposed to in the Garden of Eden on Earth. But just a theory. Yeah, we'll find out. Yes. I was just going to say something along the same lines. It's the same as the stars, just the vastness of God. And then you see them twinkling. And then how long it took for the light to get to us and just... You know, and that could be another thing. You know, hey, go out at night if it's quiet and peaceful and just kind of look up at the starry sky and just meditate on the goodness of God. So it seems like a lot of people like the creation idea. 
The fourth one and the final one is, I, you know, I don't know, maybe you guys like this. Um, this usually isn't good for me to get me close to God, but it's sort of, um, you kind of meditate on current events. So you sort of, uh, you sort of have, you know, they describe you having a newspaper. Nobody reads a newspaper anymore, maybe a few people, but you know, like maybe you look at, you know, Drudge Report or, you know, whatever, <laughs> the, the, the latest online stories, and you do that, meditating them in the light of Scripture, right? Not just going to the news source that just reinforces your bias already, but taking the news stories of the day and say, what is the prophetic significance of this? And how, you know, in light of this, how can I continue to be salt and light in this situation? So, you know, some people, that, that is a way of meditating. I almost see that. I, I'd like these three better. But, like, if you really want, like, if you're really, I mean, obviously what's happened in Israel has prophetic significance. Obviously this whole year with the coronavirus, there's prophetic significance. Um, you know, all that, and, you know, but... Um, you know, and so that is one way it lists as meditation as that, okay, I'm reading this story. Okay, God, what does this mean in the plan of God? So you're constantly taking these things and reframing them back in the plans and purposes of God. You're still focusing on God, right? Just looking at the news of the world. So, um, so that's all I have for tonight. It's a little bit past eight. So, um, so your homework is... Just pick one of these techniques we talked about and just try it, you know, um, and it's going to be a little bit of experimentation and maybe at first, you know, maybe, you know, you're going to sit and you're going to read a scripture verse and you're going to try to like do what we did with the peace be still and you're going to be like, I don't know, I don't imagine anything, I don't, say, you know, just keep going. Just keep trying it, right? This is we're developing this. We're working on this. You're you're trying to you're trying to basically figure out ways that I'm going to connect with the God of the universe. That's number one. That's what we're trying to do Amen. with all this. So again, we're not changing this. We're we're not making this into a work. We're not just making this into religion. This is about relationship. This is about connecting with God in our way, how he built us. And it's going to take a little bit of experimentation to, to get there. And so your homework is to kind of pick one of these techniques and we'll kind of come back, um, you know, next week and kind of talk about, you know, maybe successes and failures, things that work, things that didn't work. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about it and like iron sharpens iron, we'll grow together and then, you know, just be persistent and try to do something every single day. And, um, you know, you can do a combination if you want to. Um, and, you know, the scripture thing, you know, this is you're meditating on the scripture. So this isn't a time for in-depth study. That's study. Right, so I'm not trying to see what the Greek and the Hebrew says and what this commentary says. That's study. That's something else. That's beneficial. This is, I'm just taking the Word of God at face value and I'm just really chewing on it and ingesting it, every part of it flowing into my body. And so just be persistent, even if you don't feel, you know, even if you feel weird, even if you don't feel the right, you don't, you're not getting the right results or the right connection at first. And then read the chapter on prayer before next week, okay? So I'm going to pray you guys can feel free to stick around and fellowship. I know some of you guys got to get up really early. Jimmy be up at 3 o'clock in the secret place. So we got to get him home pretty soon. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. And thank you for uh, wisdom of saints who went before us, Lord, that they would teach us these things. Lord, and I pray that I just pray for your grace in this coming week, Lord, that, um, that we would be able to connect with you more, that we would be able to find a secret place and we would be able to get close to you every day, Lord, and that we wouldn't hurry, hurry, rush, rush, Lord, but we would, we, we would clear our schedule so that we would make time for you so that we could be full and so that we could accomplish the plans and purposes that you created us for. 
And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You guys have a great night. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank you for Johnny for the awesome worship. I just wanted to know how Right? You can't use my bathroom. Be a beard on the bottom.